And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is all of this just works in real time. And then you run wires that connect them all, and it, again, it, it just works. I, I read on the internet that our games have had a few bugs. <laughs> and that uh, sometimes it doesn't just work. Over the last decade, there seems to have been a rise in AAA games that have a massive amount of hype and then release to widespread disappointment and anger from the gaming community. Now, it's really clear and easy to point out why these games are such a disappointment. They're usually unfinished and broken products. But these games are everywhere. You can find a broken or unfinished game just by sorting new on PlayStation or Steam. So what makes the difference between a game that nobody plays and a game that is such a massive disappointment it makes the news? I mean, it would be easy to just say that it's gamers doing the hype, and that would be partially true. I remember uh, two years ago seeing an upvoted post on the Cyberpunk subreddit suggesting that you could have budding relationships with any NPC in the game romantically, as in you could flirt with them and be successful or unsuccessful, have a one night stand, have a relationship with a random NPC. It is not a developer's responsibility to build you a robot girlfriend. <laughs> but even though I would love nothing more to just point and say, guys, it's gamers. Thanks, that's the video. I can't, because it's not really their fault. The real culprit for these massive, massive disappointments is marketing. So yeah, we have to talk about cyberpunk if we're talking about bad marketing in video games. You can't have a major actor play a rebel rocker boy and not expect me to talk about it. This man revived his career from the ashes like a phoenix in John Wick, and now he's a rebel rocker boy? But Eddie, Johnny Silverhand is a very good character with a lot of depth. That's fine. That's okay. But uh, you can't call him a rebel rocker boy and expect me to take that seriously. I'm sorry. So marketing. When you're pitching a game to a customer, yes, you're selling the actual fun systems of the game, but you're also selling an experience. You can't just say the game is fun and people will buy it. You have to sell them on the world, on the characters, on the narrative, which is an impossible task if the video game isn't even done when you advertise it. The problem is, that's how every game is marketed. And with an RPG, a role-playing game, you're also selling another reality, an experience where you can choose whatever you want to do, and hopefully the game will carry you along with your imagination. Play it in first person, you can play it in third person, you can walk away whenever you want, you shoot him in the face if you want. <laughs> so not only is the game not done, but you have to show somebody an unfinished reality and let their mind just explore the possibilities of what they could do there. But you haven't like even made chairs yet and you don't know when you're supposed to make chairs because like making the game is a high priority and all the characters and making sure there's no bugs, but it would be weird if there's no chairs. So when do you make the chairs? I'm genuinely asking any developer, when do you make the chairs in games? Is that like last? But CD Projekt Red pulled it off in The Witcher 3. It's regarded as one of the greatest RPGs of all time, and it delivered on its promises. The problem is, once you make an RPG a modern or future first-person shooter, you are now required to make like 10 games in one. It's very different than The Witcher 3. Especially when you add driving, because now you need almost every single thing that GTA 5 had. And GTA 5 is one of the most popular and definitive games of all time. You need advanced driving systems. Roach in The Witcher 3 can't go 120 miles per hour or have his rims changed. You need a wanted system, a large detailed open world that you can interact with at every corner on top of those systems. So other than being everything GTA is, it needs to be an in-depth RPG. We're talking about CD Projekt Red here, that's what's expected of them. Choices need to matter in the game, 
and change the world and your relationships with characters. You need intelligent NPCs to interact with you, so you feel like you're not talking to a bunch of dummies. You need player choices that reflect every type of gameplay. Someone who wants to play a hero, or a villain, or a thief, or a driver, or a rebel rocker boy. You need in-depth dialogue with different dialogue choices that will affect everything. And with the current games industry today, a game with all of that is next to impossible. On top of that, it was delayed into a gap of a console generation, so it was required to release on five different versions. PC. Oh, so you're a PC gamer? What's up? What's up with you? Xbox One, whatever the fucking Xbox names are. I'm not going to try and remember and list them. One S, X, whatever. PS4 and PS5 and PC. That's it. So nobody could have met these expectations for the current developer space that we see. It's why GTA isn't a role-playing game. It's why we don't see Naughty Dog doing open world and their narrative stories. So do we cut CD Projekt Red some slack because we know nobody could have made this game? No, of course not. They marketed the game. This is so beyond their fault that it's hilarious. Cyberpunk's marketing was some of the most smug shit that we have ever seen online. Welcome to the next generation of open world adventure. We've greatly enhanced our crowd and community system to create the most believable city in any open world game to date. Cyberpunk's biggest problem isn't what didn't make it into the game. It was their marketing that built a false relationship of honesty with their customers, and then when their customers trusted them, they promised them the world. CD Projekt Red's marketing was the marketing embodiment of I'm not like other girls. They shit on other developers, they hyped themselves up, and they spit on the idea of releasing an unfinished game while they were simultaneously freaking out in the office because the game wasn't even close to done. In other words, they lied. They lied to everyone, and we all know that now. But it's not a unique problem to CD Projekt Red. It's the way video games are marketed that leads developers down this path. I think the very obvious company to point to that does this as well is Bethesda. The first lie Bethesda ever told me when I was paying attention is one of the funniest things that's happened in video game marketing. Todd Howard was making a promotional video for Skyrim on YouTube and he said this. So we're interested in all the little details like this plant here, the medium details of these logs and trees and all the way up to distant mountains. And if you've played our previous stuff, you know that mountain is not just a backdrop. You can walk all the way to the top of that mountain. Now, there are mountains across Skyrim. They border the entire map and there are some smaller mountains in the game. But Todd pointed to the one main mountain in the game that was super important to the story, that was the fleshed out mountain, and was like, hmm, I don't know, twist my arm here if I had to point, but maybe that mountain you could go to, I don't know, just off the top of my head. And it was the main part of the map, and he was just fucking pretending like he picked a random point. Luckily for Todd, Skyrim was a good game. Yeah, people know that was a lie, but he kind of got to escape gamer jail for another year, unlike CD Projekt Red. And we all know, Todd is the king of this shit. He told the media that Fallout 3 had 200 different endings. Um, being that we are Bethesda, um, <clears throat> everything gets a bit big, so as of last week, we're over 200 endings. That is not an exaggeration. Who even wants 
200 different endings to a game. They wouldn't be good and satisfying narratives if that were the case. Like, think of your favorite movie, and now think of someone coming up with 200 different endings to that movie. When Destiny was announced, they showed a bunch of sweeping, beautiful landscapes that looked like they were ready to explore. The game came out, and those were just background skyboxes that you couldn't go to and weren't part of the map. Anthem? We're not even gonna touch Anthem. Most AAA games are marketed this way. We're promised an experience that privately is not developed into a full game yet, but the developers do their best to match that experience being marketed. The difference between a well-marketed game and a poor one is the game's ability to match the experience being sold. God of War wasn't even close to done when they showed it at E3. You know, but the scary thing was like we showed 10 minutes and 45 seconds or something, and it took a year and a half to get there. And now we have a year and a half left essentially, and we have like 30 hours to make and you're kind of scratching your head like, how is that humanly possible? What we saw at E3 is all that they had, but they somehow pulled off making a game that exceeded what we were sold at E3. So what's the difference between God of War and Cyberpunk in marketing? They're still unfinished and being advertised, but the thing is, God of War showed us 100% gameplay. The working game that they had that they were gonna build the rest of the game off of. They didn't promise us a bunch of other stuff, I mean, I guess they showed a dragon far away, but they showed us this is what we have, so expect this, and we're gonna make more, so hopefully you like it. That is nowhere near what Cyberpunk did. Santa Monica Studios didn't suck themselves off on Twitter. They didn't really say anything other than just showing us what they had, and then not talking, and then giving us the game. They didn't make a shit ton of promises. They didn't make fake gameplay with those promises. They just showed us the game, they made more of the game, and then they released it. So, one thing I think we all know is almost all of the blame usually falls on the publisher and not the developer. A lot of the times the publisher is advertising the game poorly, while the developers are maybe busting their ass on a broken game privately. So if you make a game, and you promise something that isn't ready, or maybe not even possible, your game is not ready to be announced. Or at least, it's not ready to be talked about in depth to the press. Maybe you can put a teaser out, but don't talk about it like it is already done. I don't want to see a single Reddit AMA until the game systems are ready. The problem with, say, CD Projekt Red with Cyberpunk, and Bethesda with, I don't know, all their games, is that they publish their own games. They have full control over what they say and do. Yes, there's investor pressure, but that does not justify gassing yourself up for years and then lying to people. So I think it's very bizarre that some of the biggest disappointments in gaming lately are ones that are published by the developers. They're making all the choices themselves. So a final note, making games is really hard and really expensive. And if we keep marketing them this way, this is gonna keep happening. There needs to be a fundamental change in video game marketing, and it needs to be more about honesty and showing what you actually have. And if you don't, shut up and don't show the game until it's ready.